Electric potential, or voltage, is going to be a little trickier. We don't have an exact analog with the gravitational field and the gravitational force and gravitational potential energy. We're striking out into new territory here. Let's review where we started with electricity. Coulomb's law calculated the electric force between two charges, and again we'll use the capital Q and a little q. We then assume Q was a small positive test charge. We divided the force by Q, and that's how we came up with the definition for electric field, which is KQ over R squared. We then found the electric potential energy here, U sub E, by taking the work done to move two charges close to each other, and we found electric potential energy. We used the little calculus, calculus well, made reference to it, and we came up with the potential energy is equal to k big Q times little q divided by r. What we're going to do now is we went from force to electric field by dividing out little q. We're going to do the same thing again for potential energy. We will divide out the q and we will define a new term called electric potential or voltage as potential energy per charge and that's now going to be kq no other Q here, just the capital Q, divided by R. V is voltage, and it is measured in volts. Another way to talk about voltage is that it's the electric potential energy per charge, which is how we came up with the definition. And potential energy, all energy is in joules, charge is in coulombs, so one volt equals one joule per coulomb. To make it a little more understandable, let's take a battery here. Okay, let's say it's a six volt battery, and we have a plus side and a minus side. As the electrons are spit out by this battery, the electrons come drifting in this way. They come into the battery, and for every coulomb of charge, each coulomb gets one joule of energy. So the electrons coming out this side will each have every coulomb of it, every coulomb's worth of electrons will have one joule of energy. So they came in here with very little energy, the battery transferred the chemical energy from all the various chemical reactions going on here into electrical energy, and this of course you'll recognize as a circuit. Notice how I have the electrons coming out this way. The direction of conventional current, of course, is this way because it's the direction of positive charges. But every coulomb of charge now has one joule of energy, and that is what one volt is equal to. Another equation we can get from this definition of voltage or electric potential is, here's our, here's our definition, voltage is potential energy per charge. If I have an external force and it does work on this charge, we know from the work energy equation that you're adding energy to the system. In this case, we're going to talk about increasing the potential energy of the charge. We're not going to worry about it having a velocity at this point, just how have we raised its potential energy. So I'm going to say the work of an external field raises a potential energy, and by multiplying through by Q, I get this equation here. Work is equal to QV. So the work done in moving this charge through a voltage, a voltage difference, a potential here, would be Q times V. If I have a negative charge, you would have a negative in here, so the work would be negative, it would be minus QV. We will get back to voltage in a, a few slides here, but first of all, let's look at two parallel plates. We want to talk about work and potential energy and then make the connection to voltage. Let's have two parallel plates. You can see them up here. This one's going to be positive, tr positively charged. This will be negatively charged. When you do the math, and again, this will involve a little bit of calculus and Gauss's law, which you'll see again in AP Physics, you find out that this field here between the two plates is constant. It does not change. It has no dependence on, the, on where the charge is within the plates. So let's put a positive charge over here, right there. Now, what's going to happen? The field is going to push him down, right? A positive charge goes in the direction of the electric field. So when that happens, and this is very much like gravity, the potential energy will decrease. Just like if this were a gravitational field, it goes from top to bottom, and any objects you put up here will fall down, and when they get to the bottom, the potential energy here is less than here. 
On the previous slide, as this charge here got nearer to the bottom, its potential energy decreased, and also its electric potential would decrease. So the potential up here would be higher than here. Now, if there's no other force present, this charge will accelerate, because if you just have the electric field force, there's only one force acting, it's in the down direction, and by Newton's second law, F equals MA, it will accelerate. But if we want the charge to move with the constant velocity, which of course means that A would be equal to zero, we need another force to balance it out, and we'll call this an external force. This force, this external force, is acting upward, right, because we want to keep the positive charge from going down. The direction, it's still moving this way, but with zero acceleration. In this case, the work done by this external force, since they're anti-parallel, would be negative. Summarizing this case where we have a positive charge between two oppositely charged parallel plates, it's falling down due to the effect of the electric field. However, we have an external force keeping it, trying to keep it up. These forces are equal and opposite, so the net acceleration is zero. And as we showed in the previous slide, the work done by the external force is negative because the force is opposite the direction here, the direction of motion. The work done by the electric field is positive. The net force, and if I have the net force equal to zero, the net work must be zero. And then the potential energy of this system decreases as this charge moves down to the negative side. Let's take another case. This time we'll start the positive charge at the bottom and we want it to move up. The electric field is pushing it down. So we need an external force in this direction to move the charge up. In this case, the work done by the electric field will be negative because the charge is moving up, the, the electric field force is directed down, these are anti-parallel, so the work will be negative. And since the work is negative, the potential energy will be positive because the two are uh, negative, negatively related to each other. Work is equal to the negative of the potential energy. And since it's negative work, we have positive potential energy. You can view this if this were a mass and this were a gravitational field, and we raise the mass up. Let's say we put it up here on top of the table. We've increased the potential energy. And just to recall from first semester work, that would equal MGH. So here we have the positive charge moving upward under the influence of this external force. It's balanced by the force of the electric field. So the sum of the forces equals zero, which means the acceleration is zero. And the charge is moving up. The work done by the external force is positive because the direction of motion is the same as the external force. To summarize this point, where we have the charge moving from down to up, the work done by the external force is positive. Right? The direction of motion is this way, the force is this way, that's positive work. The work done by the electric field is negative. The electric field direction is this way. The motion of the particle is this way, anti-parallel, negative work, which implies that the potential energy of the system increases. When we talk about the work, and we then want to derive a potential energy, we always wonder, we worry about the electric field, the field force, which way that direction is. And the negative of that work will give the potential energy. So if I have negative work done by the field, I have a positive potential energy. The potential energy increases. There's another case. Unlike gravity, where mass is always positive, charges come in two flavors, positive or negative. So I won't go through all the, uh, the directions we did on the last one, but we will summarize it here. We have a negative charge here. In one case, we want to move it up. Now, of course, this is, this is the direction that the electric field wants the charge to move. The electric field is directed down, but this is a negative charge, and negative charges move opposite the direction of the electric field. And in this case, we have a negative charge up here, and we want to move it downwards. In this case, we'd have to apply a force because clearly the field wants to bring it that way. And you can see here, the electric field is pointing up the force of the electric field. The electric field is pointing down, but the force on a negative charge is pointing up. 
So we need an external force to point down. This slide summarizes what happens with the negative charge inside the uniform electric field that is directed down. In this top case, work done by the external force is negative as it is opposite the direction of movement. Work done by the electric field is positive. The potential energy of the system decreases. So you can see how this is different from gravity. We've got this object rising and we actually have the potential energy decreasing. Conversely, when we started the charge up here, and as it moves down, work done by the electric force is positive, and we actually have the potential energy of the system increasing. And that, that kind of makes sense. The closer these two negative charges get together, there's more energy stored between them. They actually want to separate. So that is going to cause an increase in potential energy as the charge gets closer to this plane of negative charges. Like electric potential energy, voltage is not a vector, so we can add multiple voltages directly, and all we have to do is worry about whether it's a positive or a negative sign. Like gravitational potential energy, voltage is not an absolute value. It is compared to a reference level. For example, with gravity, you could have a potential energy of zero for a ball sitting on a desk if you measured the desk as the zero point. If you measured the floor as the zero point, you would have a positive potential energy. What we're going to do is assume that V equals zero at infinity, so we can assign a specific value to voltage when we do our calculations. The next slide will continue the gravitational analogy to help understand this concept. Here we have a sample of a topographic map. Each line on this map shows where you have a constant height. So over here, if you have a point on this line, whoop, this line here, anywhere along that line, you have the same height above sea level. If you have a large space between lines, that means you have a slow change in height. A little space between lines means there's a very quick change in height. So where in this picture would be the steepest incline? Well, frankly, it'd be somewhere in this area here. You can see how there's very little difference between the lines. That means you're going up a hill, and this looks like the peak of the hill right here. Over here, you're kind of in a valley. There's a lot of space between the lines. These topography lines are called equipotential lines, right here, when we use them to represent the electric potential. They represent lines where the electric potential, like the height above sea level in the previous example, are the same. So this would be a kind of like geographic, geological view of a mountain. And this obviously here would be the highest height, this is somewhat lower, this is at the bottom, but all points on this line have the same height. When we make the analogy to electric potential, up here would be 300 volts, here would be 230 volts, here's 50 volts. We now look at it from a top down, and you can see right at 300 volts here, that's the smallest area, that's this little circle here. And what we notice is the closer the lines are, the faster the change in voltage. Now, the bigger the change in voltage, the greater the electric field. There's, there's a direct relationship between voltage and electric field. We'll drop the gravitational analogy for a while and just talk about electric field lines and equipotential lines. These blue lines here are the electric field lines radiating outward from a positive charge. These green lines are equipotential lines or everywhere that the potential is the same. And just remember again, this is really a three-dimensional effect, but of course we can only represent the two on this piece of paper. So, notice how the electric field lines up here, they're spaced further apart, they're less dense. What that also means is the potential is less out there. The electric field lines are further apart when the equipotential lines are further apart. The electric field then goes from a high potential, right close to the charge, to a lesser potential out here. For example, if we took a little area like this, we're including maybe three electric field lines and we have a high potential. We take a similar area out here and we get one, maybe two lines, which indicates less of a potential. Another very important fact is this first one. Electric field lines are always perpendicular to equipotential lines. Now, that becomes important when we try to measure an electric field. Uh, there are labs that will 
show us how to find equipotential surfaces, and then we just draw perpendicular lines to them to find the electric field. For a positive charge like this one, the equipotential lines are positive, so let's just make up a number here. Let's say it's 100 volts in here, and they decrease to zero and infinity. So perhaps this would be 50 volts, this would be 20 volts, and somewhere out of infinity, out of infinity potential would equal zero. If this were negative charge, it's still, potential is still zero at infinity. However, close by, instead of 100 volts, let's say this was the same magnitude charge, it would be minus 100 volts, and then further out, negative 50, negative 20, negative 10, until eventually it reaches zero, coming up from the negative side. Now, if this isn't terribly interesting, uh, more interesting equipotential lines, sort of like the topographic lines on a map, are generated by more complex charge configurations, and we'll show an example of that next. Here's a more interesting configuration. Over here, we have a positive charge, and over on the other side, we have a negative charge. Let's say it's equal in magnitude. Now, this is the electric dipole that we talked about earlier. So if I look at the equipotential lines, for example, this positive charge would be generating positive lines, the negative charge would be generating negative voltages, and of course at any individual point we have to add them up. So notice right down the middle we have zero volts, because this line is equidistant from both charges, so the potentials will just cancel out. This is giving a positive, this is giving a negative, so there is zero volts right between them. And then closer to the positive charge we have 20 volts, goes down to zero, and then the potential over here is more affected by the negative charge, so it is of negative voltage. The red lines, these are the electric field vectors. They're perpendicular to the tangent line of every equipotential line. And if you were to look at this, if we were to connect a bunch of these up, we'd have something going like this, which we saw earlier when we did the electric field for a dipole, because that's what we have here. We have an electric dipole. And down here, you connect all the electric field vectors up, they go something like that. And you can see the tangent to these lines at any point would be your electric field and they're perpendicular to the equipotential lines.